Oh boy. All right. I'm back. I'm back, guys, doing some anime. Hello, my cat. Bruh. Man, guys, I'm back doing these animes review. Animes. Anime review. Oh my god, I fucked that up. But yeah, I am back with anime reviews, and I am, and yeah, and ah, oh, shit. Bruh. Take three. Oh. Fuck. Oh my god. Whew. All right. Back. Back doing anime. I'm in the back. Fuck! Come on, boy. Wow. I'm in the back. I... Oh my god. <laughs> back in the mood of watching anime. Man. What other stuff do I got I like to watch? Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at my list. Oh, painting Star Stalking and Gardabell. Fuck it, I mean, heard it's random as fuck. Might as well <laughs> be go back and within a bang. I, I don't know what the fuck do I expect. I mean, I've seen FLCL, there's no way. Well. What the hell did I just watch? Hello guys, Survivor here. Welcome back to yet another review. And yeah, anime review. Yeah, I'm back with anime reviews and stuff. Holy shit. I'm still boggled what the hell I just watched some time ago. I've been trying to think about doing this re re review for a bit. Because I didn't know when. And it depends on, on the time. And wow. Seriously, like this, this is something that I really like. Like... Like, I love the fact that painting and stalking with Gardabelle is literally, like, Japan just kind of interesting, like, how we did all this stuff, and it's literally the exact opposite of what, what, what you would think out of a regular cartoon. Like, it does have that an anime-ish style, which it definitely does have a style with it, but it's just, it's got, like, the episodic format and its premise, but it's, like, it's the exact fucking opposite of any cartoon show you would think of. That's the thing. So, Painting Stalking with Gardabelle is a show about, about these two a a a angels, uh, Painting Pain and Stalking, and their names are, they're not subtle. And that's mostly, common, that's mostly thinking thanks to their powers. They're, they're angels trying to take down ghosts so they can, so they can, so they can go back to heaven because the more ghosts they take down, the more heaven coins they get in the heaven so they can go back up to heaven. That's that's pretty much the goal. Of it. And it's pretty much as you would expect out of a show like this, but at the same time, it's not. Y'all want to know why? This is on some rated R shit. Hell, I would bet. Oh shit, I would bet my behind. That this was so close to a rated A. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of animes and shit out there that can like reach up to rated A territory, like High School DXD in a way. But it's like I feel like Panty is talking to reach higher than that because Panty is literally a freaking sex addict. There's many in, in your windows and all this stuff. I'm like, what the hell? I'm pretty sure someone just randomly just started playing this and. And I still have like, and when you hear Penny moaning and shit, it's like, you, someone would think, on, on the other side of the room, you'd be watching porn or something. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. And the thing is, the reason why they're called Penny and is because when Penny pulls her panties down, she, it turns into a gun. And Sagan pulls, you know, Sagan's down, she, it turns into a fucking sword. Or, or swords, because <laughs> she's got two of them. And it's just the most random shit you can think of. And that's what I love about this show. It's so random. Like, and sure, I know there are some pitfalls. I will get to that in a minute. But it is so random, but in, in, in a good way. Like, it knows what it is, and it's parodying the shit out of it. There are so many references 
that you can just like that can kind of pass you by. I went back and saw, and I was like, oh, they went out of their way to make an entire first half episode, like a first half of an a a episode about Transformers, and they literally got a, 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 a cartoon, regular, a generic cartoon narrator to do this shit, and, and it's funny as fuck. That by the time that 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 first half of the episode ends, it literally ends off with, "Who wrote this shit?" Like, <laughs> it's, I'm just don't know what to say. Like, what it, it's what what I love about this as well is Penny and Stockton. They're not the best people, but they're entertaining as hell, and the show makes up for it. Cause that's why I. I think that's one of definitely the positives that the main characters themselves they they're not the best people, like at all. They're the exact opposite of what you expect out of an angels. Same with uh, the 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 demon sisters well, in, in the second half of the anime. It like they're the exact opposite of what you expect out, out of fucking demons. <laughs> which given the ending, which I'm gonna get into. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I'm just it's kind of a yeah. I got a bit of a theory that I might make a video on uh, somewhere, sometime down down the line, because I, I do always got my own theories. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one to think of this, but yeah, for real though, like painting a stocking, the whole the, the show's named after after them, and they make and they make the experience so much better. Even in probably one of the worst I think episodes I've seen. Like I don't know if you could call it an a a episode because it wasn't a full fledged episode. It, it's just like how like like a regular cartoon would pretty much you know be organized like the first like like there's like a first half of an episode and then there's a second half of an episode a lot of cartoons do that especially you know you know here you know here in here in America they they, they they did that and let's just say that first half of that one episode is just one of the worst I think episodes I've seen ever of all time as much as I love this show that first half episode storyline was just disgusting as shit to me and I'm not, I'm not I'm not talking about the first a a episode but if y'all know which episode it, it, it is y'all can already tell in the comments down below that was just one of the worst episodes and even though Stockton and Panty had their own quips here and there but it's just even they couldn't even they couldn't Make make up for that god awful ep uh, half episode. I know I shouldn't be getting to the neg ne negatives already, but I feel like I need to get that out of the way because that is just one of the worst episodes I've seen. That first half of that episode, though so that second half of that episode, which was completely different because it barely had painting and stock in it. The second half of that episode, the other half and shit, it was one of the best parts of the whole show in my opinion. It was so different, but it was so fucking good. If y'all know which episode I'm talking about, y'all fucking know. And like I said, I just want to get that out of the way because that was just, oh Jesus Christ, I will never get that out of my head and I will never watch that ever again. But what really elevates is like, you know, Penny is literally a sex addict and Sokin just eats, you know, you know, just sweets all the time. There's even an entire a a a episode which I think is one of my, one of my personal favorite a a a episodes where Stalking is literally uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's the same ep episode. No, yeah, it's the same. It's the same ep episode where stalking is literally like, it, it's literally about her sweet thing, like you know. And it is, it is such an amazing episode. They and what I what I meant about references, they literally pull like a Rocky re re reference for like five seconds. It's, it's oh my god. I'm telling you, the references in this are just so over the place, but it's, like, so good, because it's, like, because the show knows what it is. It's a parody. It's a satire. Okay, I want to say. It, it's a parody. It knows what it is, and it does a really fucking awesome job. Like, it takes the most random shit you can think of, and, and they try, and they make it entertaining. I'm telling you, if you thought FLCL fully coolie was was weird and random, ain't got shit on Pandy Stocking. That's pretty much why I really want to, like, like, okay, that's where I'm going to start with the random shit. Because that's just pretty much what the show really much is. It's random, but it's so damn lovable. Hell, uh, Garter Belt himself, he's 
funny as hell. He's literally the exact opposite you would expect out 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 of a <laughs> Damn, like this dude is funny as hell. And what's so funny is that every time they kill a ghost, right? They 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 do the little transformation thing, like it's got it's literally like they're in anime form. Then like then like they take out their we weapons and they and they finish off a ghost, they're like repent motherfucker. They, it literally in I shit you not. I'm pretty sure this happened in the same, like, in the exact studio. Like, they just decided, like, going ahead and, like, you know how in how in art class there's always someone that just, like, wanted to create an exact, like, rebel, rebel cut out of some shit materials here and there, but it literally looks exactly like these characters. Like, something out of, like, a claymation or something, but it's kind of realistic in a way. You know, that, that type of thing. They literally put all that together to make the ghosts that they made it uh, uh, they were animated in the show and they literally blew that fucker up and they they do it for every ghost in this show and and, and it's literally stock footage in in like their studio they decided to make a replica of the of these ghosts to animate it and then just blow them up they couldn't get an a a anime they, they didn't want to do an animation of it just blowing up because I, I, I don't know if it, 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 was, if it was the budget, so they could keep on doing some random cool shit here and there. But I'm sure because of how they knew how silly and fucking crazy the show was, they were like, you know what? Let's do this because so we, because why not? It's it's so fucking crazy. I they they legit did that. I'm pretty sure they did that in their studio. Wow. Penny and Stock, Stock and, like I said, do carry the show. The, the show's named after them. There's a little guard bell who does show up quite a bit. He does show up a lot. And there's even a, 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 a half an a episode focused on knowing more about him. Like, the second half, like, here's, here's the thing. Honestly, I love the first half of Penny and Stock and because it's just more random. These characters, like, just having fun and, like... Okay, I want to say having fun. There's always some bull bullshit happening, but like it's like there's just so much freedom and all this stuff. And I think feel like that once they got to the second half. I'm not saying the quality dipped. I'm just saying like there was really good content. Like again, just like Gardabell, there was a whole first half episode fo fo focused on him. Then there's a then there's another second half. Then there, then there then there was a second half of an episode where it was entirely focused on. Chuck, I, I, their little, the little dog thing, which really looks some out of a va looks some out of Invader Zim. Actually, I'm pretty sure that most of that whole episode was about Chuck because it was because there was like there was like a mini mi mini skit thing they like did like in like for like the first five minute minutes and they just like cut out of that and like you no know, like the first five or six minutes then the rest of the episode is just about Chuck and it's. It's weird. It's psychologically weird. It's like, okay, what? But yeah, it was a weird episode. But again, that's why I love about Penny and Stockin. It's weird, but in, it's like it does different things. That's that's the thing. During the ending of the show, like the last two episodes, it kind of pulls on your heartstrings a little, little, little bit. And I mean, I wouldn't say it pulls on your heartstrings, but it's like it's trying to be emotional by the end, which okay makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's how you're going to end your series, and fuck it. <laughs> that's what I love about Painting Stock, is that every episode, there's always something different that they come up with. And that's why I love them, that's why I love, like, even though I hate the fuck out of the first half of episode 6, I think. I'm pretty sure it is episode 6. The second half was so different. It was focused on just a random dude with, like, with, in a completely different art style, by the way. In his own Japanese workplace and everything it barely even focused on anything painting is talking related they're actually rev 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 referenced by his granddaughter no i don't know no i don't think his daughter i don't know shit no I, i'm pretty sure it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's his actual daughter i think i don't know i'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure damn i'm damn I, I forgot they're referenced until the end of the episode where they where they where they just do show up it's and it's one of the best fucking parts. Of the, I, I feel like that made up that, that god-awful first half storyline. And that's just what I love about Pain and Stalking. It's so different the more episodes. Like, you know, you're, you're watching it. And 
There's always some different. There's always some weird happening. I think I pretty much overstated what I said. Being stalking with Gardabell is literally probably one of the best shows I've seen in a while. At least one of the best a a animes I've seen in a while. I will definitely go back and rewatch it. Definitely the better parts, like the first half, because the first half is just fucking amazing. I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying the second half of the series was, you know, dipped down in quality. I'm just saying, like, it it was definitely great. But let's just say the ending, like, even though it was really good, the after credits just kind of slaps you in the face, and it kind of ends off with a shock twist ending. Now, this was made by Gonex, by the way. And Gonex is known for their just kind of random e endings or messed up. I heard that Evangelion's ending, which is like the third mov movie, I heard like it's fucked up. <laughs> FLCL ended with a note. And with a pretty decent note. So it, it, it ended with a really decent note. It, like, like you're... But here's the thing that I don't like about that final after credit scene, and this really does piss me off. It's one of those things where I'm sure they were going to make another season, because that's pretty much what they were setting up as. But it comes out of fucking nowhere. And like I said, this does play into a theory that I will make a video on sometime down, down the line. Because if y'all know what happened at you know back in the previous a a a a a episode with the whole, because it's kind of it kind of ties in with, with the actual finale, then I got a theory on like what it is, and plus it plays with the girls' personalities and you know, even the demon sisters, sisters, which which I am gonna make a th theory on. But but like I said, it, it pretty much comes out of nowhere, but I don't think it's as come out of nowhere as we would think that as I feel like it's kind of been staring right at us in the face the whole time and in, in a sense I will like I said I will make that in a different video but again it just feels like a way to like and it just it just disappoints me that we never got a season two it's been literally nine years nine years since 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 it, it ended and no there's been nothing. I now mostly because of the fact that the studio that did work on it. Oh, I, I'm talking about the studio. The I think that's something to do with like the fact that the team behind it that ended up breaking off from Gynex ended up making Studio Trigger, who are known for and you know Kill a Kill, Darling the Franks, and I'm pretty sure it was like one of their one of their first official works, uh, Inferno Cop. And you can definitely tell that I'm pretty sure it's the same team because Inferno Cop is, is literally just a bunch of walking pictures. <laughs> like a bunch of car cardboard cut cutouts walking around. Like like the budget ain't even that great, you can definitely tell. But it is random as hell and it is enjoyable. Not the best show I've seen, but it's definitely enjoyable. Now, if they got the rights to paying a stock, and they will love, I'm pretty sure they would love to make a season two, but they don't. Gynex still has it, and I don't know where, what Gynex has been doing recently. <laughs> now, unless we get a season two, that ending is just wow. I would like to think it was kind of a, a dream if we don't even get a season, season season two. In my personal opinion, like even though I got a theory for all this shit, I'm just like thinking like. That just came out so came out of nowhere. I'm feeling like it was just added at the last minute, and no one just gave it gave it gave a shit. So I'm thinking like it's probably just a nightmare thing that Panty had, just some just out of nowhere, because no one heard. That, that probably is a thing. I know I've been talking about how random, crazy in it in is, but the a a animation and the art style as well, like especially the art style, like it's really really good. Like the animation isn't anything I would say anything top notch, but it's like some that you would kind of expect out of a show like this and it, it, it works for what it is like, like I said like Pain Stalking is an amazing show with great like it do, I don't think it even needs great animation like like I said In Inferno Cop which I'm pretty sure was same, was made by the same team by the way it barely had any animation in it like at all like I don't think it had any an an animation there was barely anything in it and that was just enjoyable at best. So, with good animation, 
quite a bit here in crap with all this random shit. Yeah, you gotta definitely say that painting stock is that definitely a really fucking just it, it, it's a ride. It's an experience. Yeah, I just don't know what else to say about painting and stocking. It's without really spoiling a a a anything. But it's... I definitely do recommend it. It is one of the best shits. Like, again, I highly recommend watching the English dub. Because... Monica Real and Jay Mar Marty, which, by the way, given their situation now... Yeah. Seriously, Jamie Marchie and Monica Rial in those roles of painting and stocking, they nailed it with the dub. I heard that Jamie actually wrote a lot of the lines with this with the shit in here, and I'm like, you fucking serious? <laughs> I so yeah, I highly recommend watching the dub of it. It, it is it is amazing and is some of the best shit you'll hear. It, it definitely just works with the tone of the show. So yeah, just go and watch the dub ver version. You will guys will not regret it. Hell. Fun Funimation actually uh, actually has the first two a a episodes of the dub uploaded on YouTube. So yeah, go uh, go watch that for your first impressions of, of it. So yeah, I definitely do recommend watching Pain and Stock. And again, it's amazing and it, it's just, it's funny. I, I don't know what to say. Because like I said, Pain and Stock and they're amazing characters. Not the best kind of pe pe people, but damn they're funny. Kind of like Revy from Black Lagoon. She's not exactly the best damn person in the damn world, but God, she's awesome. Everything else about the show is great, and I and I do recommend giving it a a, a a a watch. And given, like I said, my pitfalls is definitely that very last scene. It just again didn't make any sense, but I but it, it could be just justified if a second season was announced and it does kind of confirm like okay this and this but but as long as we get but if we don't get a season two I'm still kind of as a bit of a flaw and like I said that first half of that one ep episode like I said uh so I would like to give Penny Saga and Garnabelle Mm, I, I don't know why, why I would give it, because I don't want to give it too high of a score, because it's definitely not a 10 out of 10. I'm thinking it's mostly an 8 out of 10. I, I don't want to be too generous, because like I said, I don't. I'm, I just love that first half more than what happens in the second half. Just being personally uh, honest, but I think overall it's a really good show, an awesome show, and I do recommend watching it. Again, Pain Stocking gets an 8 out of 10. Great series, definitely recommend watching it, especially with the dub. Come on, Jamie, Margie, and Mon Monica Real fucking nailed it as the as those characters. Hey, regardless of the shit that those the those 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 two in real life are 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 in right now, you guys just cannot de de deny the talent ta the talent at Funimation that that they bring with the dubs, especially Jamie Margie. Like, she does a really amazing job, you know. Reese Grammar, Grimmery, Kana, Al Al Alverona, and anyway though, that's going to be my review of Pain and Stock with Garabelle. It is a great show. Again, go watch it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like the video if y'all enjoyed. Subscribe if y'all want to see more. Comment below what y'all think. And if y'all are new to the channel, if y'all want to see more, be sure to subscribe for more. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in the next review. And let's just say I rewatched an anime that I didn't find it was that bad at all until like, oh. Fuck me.